Hello everybody, welcome to our service today. Welcome everybody on social media. We just uh, uh, prayed for Afghanistan and what's uh, here in the congregation, what's been going on over there. And so we just ask that you'd be in prayer concerning that and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, mix your faith with ours. Like I said, we just prayed uh, for that right before we came on social media. Hey, we've been studying about uh, the kings of the Old Testament and uh, been on this for probably a couple of months now. And uh, we're not just looking at this from a historical standpoint. Uh, that's really the least of it. We're looking at it from the standpoint of lessons we can learn from these kings. And we have learned some wonderful lessons from um, uh, uh, Saul, starting with Saul, uh, the first king of the United Kingdom, and then David and Solomon. And then it was split after Solomon. And uh, in the north, Israel, and the south, Judah, and we went through both Judah and Israel and studied about, uh, about the kings so far. And we finished up Israel in the north, but we still have some kings in the, in the south. And uh, uh, today I want to look at one of the most interesting kings of all. One of the most interesting kings of all. And of all of the kings, of all of the kings... This one right here today, you should set your utmost attention on. Um, I guess uh, uh, David, King David would rival, uh, him and Solomon would rival this one as far as lessons we can learn from both of their lives. But this one today, few people, you know, people have heard about uh, David, yeah, m many have heard about David, many have heard about Solomon, but few people have heard about this guy here today. And uh, it's King Uzziah. King Uzziah, he was also known as Azariah, but I refer to him as Uzziah. And uh, uh, I tell you what, I, I cannot possibly overemphasize uh, to you how important this one is. You can learn so much uh, from this one today. King of Judah, son of Amaziah. We talked about Amaziah last week. You know, when I was 20 years old, I say 20, I might have been 21, right in there, my very early 20s, the Holy Spirit supernaturally through a through a real New Testament prophet you know there's a lot of people in the land that call themselves prophets but but this guy and, and they're not but this guy here was I mean, he was really a New Testament prophet he's in heaven now uh, but I mean I mean this guy was was a really a New Testament prophet and uh, uh, I mean when, when I mean, he was cold-blooded accurate uh, David Crank has anybody ever heard of David Crank and not, now not David Crank his son but uh, he's pastoring here in St. Louis not the son this is David Crank senior and I seldom call names out on social media but but I, I just felt impressed to David Crank senior he's in heaven now but I tell you what he was a for real New Testament prophet I, I remember one of the one of the most accurate prophecies I I've ever heard he gave it uh, to a pastor friend of mine I wasn't there but my pastor friend uh, told me and uh, uh, incidentally my pastor friends in heaven too but uh, but be that as it may he told me that uh, he went over to David Crank's uh, church one time on Larkin Williams Road back in the early 80s somewhere in there somewhere around in there and uh, he was there and, uh, and 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 brother Crank called him out of the crowd and uh, and my pastor friend was pastoring out in Times Beach near that bridge, okay? And, um, uh, and past, uh, Brother Crank called him out of the crowd and, and, and told him and prophesied to him by the Holy Ghost and said, uh, he said that uh, your church will, will close. He said there'll be a, a, a cobweb on, in the corner and a padlock on the door. And, and now what Brother Crank didn't know that, that in the process of time, that pastor was going to relocate. He, re, he relocated to Allenton down there by Six Flags. But at this time, he was still pastoring in that church in Times Beach. And, um, and, and so uh, uh, Brother Crank told him, he said, uh, uh, your church will close. He said, there'll be a padlock on the door, a cobweb in the corner. And, he, and, and listen to this. He said that, 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 that soon thereafter... There'll be an undertow or an undercurrent come and carry your church, sweep your church completely away off its foundations. Only thing that'll be left is the foundation. And about a year and a half to two years later, give or take, there's that great big flood back there then. And, 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 and that pastor had relocated 
and, and the church was closed and there was an undertow or undercurrent that flood came and it swept that church right off its foundation. The only thing that was left was the foundation. Now that's cold blooded, accurate prophecy. Cold, cold blooded. Cold, there's no way he could have known that. Cold blooded. That puts chill, that puts, that stands a hair up on the back of my neck just talking about that. This guy was for real. The, the, I mean, he really was. I tell you what, you, I could sense his presence. I mean, when he moved here, uh, actually when he, I noticed uh, shortly thereafter, I didn't realize it till later, but the weather patterns in this area started changing. There used to be tornado, tornado warnings and, and, and bad weather. I mean, just growing up, I'd watch it on television and I'd always start shaking when the, when the, when the tornado warnings would come up. And, and, and I noticed, and I noticed that, that kind of waned off and stopped. And little did I know that was about the time when Brother Crank started his church over there on Larkin Williams Road. And he knew he understood his authority and he was taking authority over the weather. And when Warden knows by the in the name of Jesus, Warden knows those tornadoes. Off. Can you say amen? Yeah. But I, t I could sense that man's presence. I mean, I mean, the anointing on that man and that ministry. I tell you what, I, I, I'd be down there walking around Fenton City Park with my wife and you could you could sense that the anointing on that on that man and, and that ministry. And, and I tell you what, when he when he died, went to heaven, that, that, that left. It's gone. It's not there no more. I walk around Fenton City Park. It's not there anymore. But I tell you what, it was there and uh, mighty man of God. But anyway, when I was about 20 years old, this very this actually sometime before that, this uh, when I was about 20 years old, he prophesied to me, called me out of a crowd, prophesied to me concerning the 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 uh, the, the, uh, the the ministry, the calling to the ministry and so forth. And uh, interesting thing that day, I'd laid all day sick on my mother's couch. I didn't know the man. He was not a kind of a man that you could really get close to and know. But I didn't know him. I heard, heard about him on the radio. And I went over there to his uh, church back in, in, in the early 80s. And they, I remember they didn't even have the carpet on the floor yet. And uh, this was in that littler building. And then later he built on. But, but I went over there. I didn't know anybody. I was raised in the Baptist church. I'd never been around anything like this. I went in there and I'm standing there, you know, and there are a couple hundred people in there. And he got done and, and, uh, uh, and he... he he called me out of the crowd. I'd never been called out of a crowd before. That doesn't happen in Baptist church. And he prophesied to me and uh, 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 concerning the calling of, calling of God and so forth and so on. And won't get into that. But, but I do know that whole day I laid sick on my mother's couch and I had a fever and whatnot. And I went over there and he, when he was prophesying to me, I stood there, you know, in a good, in that good uh, uh, usher stance, you know, first Baptist usher stance, you know, and I looked down because I didn't know what else to do. I'm listening to every word. And when I look up, the there's like an electrical net power sitting on my head. And I looked down, looked up the second time, it was still there. Looked down, looked up the third time, it was still there. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked down. When I looked up the fourth time, uh, that, that power, that was the, I didn't know then, it was the anointing, it's the power of God. It left, it, it had lifted, and guess what else was gone? That fever and sickness was gone too. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Amen. I'm hungry for those kinds of things. But anyway, so concerning Uzziah, that, that uh, I don't know, about a couple years later, I went back over there because I didn't attend there. I just visit there once in a while. But <laughs> I went back over there. And uh, after the service, I, 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 I had thought that I'd lost the calling of the Lord. You know, I was younger. I didn't know anything much about the Bible. How many of you know the gifts and calling of God are without repentance? But I didn't know that. So I, I hadn't been living as I should for the Lord during that time. And I went back over there and I got his attention. And he came over. I walked up to the front, you know, and he came up to me and I, I asked him, I said, you know, something about, you know, have I lost the calling of God? And boy, I tell you what, he he slapped me on both sides of him and down on the ground I went. He said, down on your knees, down on your knees. And I went down on my knees, you know, this is Brother Crank Sr. And he's got, he's got a hold of my head there, you know, and he's praying over me you know, and, and, and boy, the power of God. And, and, and he, he said this, he said, Second Chronicles 26, King Uzziah, what we're going to talk about today. He said, Second Chronicles, he's talking to me, Second Chronicles 26. He said, make a life study out of it. He said, study it. He said, you're going to need it. You're going to need to learn all the lessons in there. And uh, Second Chronicles 26, King Uzziah. Now, uh, when he got up and left, here's something that interesting that happened. I was down on my hand. I was down on my hands and knees. That doesn't happen in the Baptist church. I was down on my hands and knees. And you know what? I tried to get up and I couldn't. I said I tried to get up and I couldn't. I said I tried to get. It took me over 10 minutes. I was I was I was I, I, I was I was uh, uh, stuck there on the floor under the power of God. 
I said I was stuck on the, on the floor under the power of God. I didn't know what it was. I tried to get up. I tried to move. I tried to move my knees. I tried to. I was stuck to the floor. I, I, it took me over 10 minutes just to get up off of that floor. I guess the Lord wanted me to really get, get a hold of this. He wanted me to think about, you know, Second Chronicles 26. It took me over 10 minutes. I was stuck to the floor. The only time that, uh, that has ever happened to me was, was, was uh, when we'd first moved in. Well, I say first moved into this building. We'd been in this building here uh, many, several years, you know. And uh, I remember I stepped up in the pulpit. And uh, I began to, I, I, be, I, I was up in, actually I came up to make an announcement. And I wasn't even time to preach, and I got I got stuck behind the. Does anybody hear that day? I got I got I got stuck behind the podium, and, uh, and and so I made the announcement. They sang a special, and then I preached my whole message. See, now I don't move because I got this camera on. But uh, back there, then I'd move around, and you know I'd move over here and walk over here. But I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't leave. I was stuck. And I preached the whole message, you know, dismissed the service. And uh, when I dismissed the service, and I didn't know why I was stuck, but listen, let me finish the story. So be that as it may, uh, uh, probably two thirds of the congregation left after I dismissed, I preached my message. And then usually I'd greet at the door, you know, and, and the people that wanted to greet me, I couldn't go back to the door because I was stuck up here behind the podium. So they, <laughs> they came up and greeted me, you know, and I shake their hands and whatnot, you know. And, uh, and, and so anyway, I'm just stuck there. <laughs> I can't go anywhere, you know, and uh, uh, glad nobody came up and started chasing me with a snake. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'd have done, brother. But uh, uh, but be that as it may, I'm standing there. I can't move. But here's what happened. There was there was probably, I don't know, about a, about a third or a fourth of the congregation had remained and stayed behind and were praying and whatnot. And I looked to my left and I saw in the spirit there was a he heaviness. Like, like a dark cloud, not a black cloud, but like a, like a gray cloud hanging in the spirit. You could see hanging over this lady over here on my left. And then and I saw that in the spirit. And then I looked at her face and, and what was in the spirit showed up on her in the natural in her face. She was, you could see she was broken. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying and said, call her up here. I called her up on the platform. I gave her a word uh, that the Lord gave me to give her. And no more than I did, that, that cloud lifted off of her and broke. Glory to God. The countenance on her face changed. And, and glory to God, she was immediately set free from oppression and depression. Can you say amen? And no more than that happened, then I was loosed and I could go out of the pulpit. See, if, I, if the Lord hadn't stuck me in the pulpit there, uh, she would have never got free of that. At least not there at that time. Can you say amen? See, aren't you glad uh, the Lord did that? See, he helped somebody, you see. Yes. He, and if that, he hadn't have done that, I would I'd have just dismissed, I would have just dismissed the service and went my way, you see. Aren't you glad we serve a supernatural God? Yes. And somebody said, what is all this going on, being stuck to the floor and this, that, and the other? Look, I'm just talking about little sprinklings of, uh, of manifestation of the Spirit of God. You should have been around in the early 1900s when Maria Woodworth Eder was on the scene. Anybody ever hear, hear Maria Woodworth Eder? She'd go into the, in, 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 and preach and, and teach a powerful woman uh, of the gospel. And she'd fall in trances. She absolutely would. And they say trance. Well, oh, that's evil. Well, there's an evil side to it. But you ought to read the Bible sometime. You'll see Peter. He fell into a trance when he was on that housetop praying. Remember, before he went over to Cornelius' house. How many remembers that? He fell into a trance. See, and then you can read Paul. He fell into a trance one time. If you read on in the book of Acts, I tell you what, uh, th there is an evil side to it. But there's a Holy Ghost side to it, too. I want the Holy Ghost side. What do you say? Marie Woodworth, that she fell into, she'd fall into trances. You know, people sitting in the, in the congregation start shaking. And under the power of God, I talked a moment ago how you could feel the presence of that certain prophet, you know, for, uh, you know, when I was in City Park, I could feel his presence, you know, a mile or two away. I tell you what, when Maria Woodworth Eddard would come into a town, not only the people in the congregation would start shaking, but people in the community, they'd just start shaking under the power of God and repent and come to Christ. Can you say amen? She was in uh, at Union Station, I believe it was 1903 during the uh, during the World's Fair here in St. Louis, you know, and, uh, and, and as she was up preaching, she fell into a trance. And she was froze there under the power of God by the Holy Ghost for three days. And the people in the, that came to the World's Fair, they all, I believe it was in, in the St. Louis newspaper. And she came by three, three days. She was just, think about that. 
No going to the bathroom, no eating, no nothing. She was froze. For, how, you try standing like this for five minutes sometime. She was froze three days and the people came by by the multitudes because the World's Fair was there. See, that's just like God. He'd do something like that, you know, supernatural sign to draw people under the Lord Jesus Christ. And people just came by by the multitudes to see Maria Woodworth that are stuck under the power of God. Can you say amen? Glory to God. See, I'm hungry for that in the churches of the United States today. How about you? See, it's sad to say that so many churches have traded the power of God for a latte and, and coffee and donuts. My God, I'm not against latte and coffee and donuts, but let's not have a Starbucks in the entryway to the church. What do you say? I tell you what, you want Starbucks, you can go up to Starbucks. You want Krispy Kreme, there's one right up the road. I'm not against having those things in the service, but I tell you what, I'm not for having that being the main reason we come to church. We ought to come to church for the power of God and the moving of the Holy Ghost. Can anybody say amen? I said, can anybody say amen? amen? Glory to God. And so, so many churches have traded out latte and to coffee and donuts for the power of God. I tell you what, you can have latte, you can have coffee and donuts. I tell you what, but I want the power of God in the house of Almighty God. Can you say amen? amen. Let's have the word of God first and the moving of the Holy Ghost first. And then later we can go out there and eat coffee and donuts in the entryway. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. So are you ready to get into the Bible? I could stop here and have a good sermon, couldn't I? Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God forevermore. All right, let's get to it here now. Second Chronicles 26. I gave you plenty of time to find that. All the people of Judah took Uzziah. He was 16 years old and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. We studied about him last week. Verse 3, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. He reigned 52 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name is given. Verse 4, and he, now watch this, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. That's a good thing. So many of these kings evil, but he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father Amaziah had done, and uh, notice this, verse 5, you ought to highlight it, underline it, bold it, italicize it, do whatever else you have to do to it. He sought God. He sought God. I tell you what, you want to know number one key to success in life? Seeking God. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things, all the necessities of life will be added unto you. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. Now you see, he, he is Zechariah, a prophet, you know, a man of God. And so, uh, uh, now remember this, Uzziah was a king. He wasn't a, uh, a prophet, he wasn't a priest, he was a king. Now that's going to be important when we get later on in this message, but he was a king. But yet he sought out advice from the prophets of God and what not this prophet here, Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, you know. And you know now in the Old Testament, see, they'd have to seek the prophet, you know, because they didn't have the Holy Ghost in them like we do. But here in the New Testament, we don't have to seek the prophet, you see, because we got the Holy Ghost in us. Can you say amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Now, I believe in New Testament prophets. I just talked about one just a little while ago, you see. But um, uh, 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 I believe in New Testament prophets, but the New Testament prophet doesn't have the same status or flow or function as the Old Testament prophet. Again, in the Old Testament, the people had to go, the kings and whatnot had to go to the prophet, you know, to get direction from, from the Lord, you see. But here in the New Testament, we got the Holy Ghost in us, so, so we don't have to go to the prophet. Now, I believe in New Testament prophets. They might give you a word of, uh, of confirmation or whatnot. They might even give a word of, of what's coming in the future. You see that? In the New Testament with the book, uh, with Agabus, you know, he prophesied concerning a, a drought and whatnot, and a, so on and so forth. So I believe in that certainly. But but I'm just trying to tell you that we don't seek a prophet here in the New Testament the same way you'd seek him in the Old. So you need to realize that. But here in the Old Covenant, you see, he sought he sought God, and then he sought he sought out d uh, direction and whatnot from his prophets, you know, and Zechariah, who had understanding and vision of God. As now watch this, underline this, bold it, highlight it, uh, uh, you know, whatever you got to do here. And as long as he, as long as Uzziah sought the Lord. Now watch this. God made him prosper. God made him prosper. Actually, God thrust prosperity on him. He was made to prosper by Almighty God. Why? Because he sought God. And as long as he sought God, God made him prosper. Prosper, And then in verse 6, he went out and made war against the Philistines, who were enemies of the people of God. And he broke down the wall of Gath. And remember, that was the city of the giants, you know. 
That was the city of the giants. If you need to break down a giant in your life, well, what do you do? You seek God. That's what you do. And so he sought the Lord. And uh, as long as you're seeking God, I tell you what, you'll be able under the power of God uh, to break down walls, you see. And we all have walls that we have to go through in life. And if we'll seek God, we'll be, in a, we'll have, we'll be empowered by the Spirit of God to break those walls down, you see, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper and he broke down walls. And uh, not only the wall of Gath, but the wall of Jabneth, the wall of Ashdod, you see. And he built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. So not only was he able to break things down under the power of God because he sought God, but there was also he was able to build things, you see, and, and, and cause things to be built. And so we need to seek the Lord not only for, for the wall breaking down uh, uh, ability, you know, by the power of the Spirit of God, but we also need to seek God because not only do you need to break things down in your life, but, you know, things need to be built in your life life as well. Is that right? And so, so seek the Lord and, you'll, and the power of God will come on you and you'll be able to build what you need to build in, in, in your life under his power, you see. And, and then notice verse 7. You ought to highlight this, uh, underline it, bold it, italicize it, whatever you have to do. It said God helped him. How many of you want to be helped by Almighty God? I, I want God to help me. I need God helping me all the time. And God helped him, see. Now, why did God help him? Because he sought God. Because he sought God with all of his heart and God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Jerbal and against the Minyan. You know, I mean, God was helping him against his enemies, you see. And, and notice this, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. How would you like your enemies bring you, bring you tribute, you see? But he sought God. And his fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt. I mean, you see, you seek the Lord and God, 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 will, God will promote you. Let, let your, the, the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, or, 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 or the south. But where does it come from? It comes from the north. It comes from God. That's where God sits in the far sides of the north, you know. And, and, and so, so tell you what, uh, we, we seek the Lord. I tell you what, he'll, call, he'll, he'll, he'll cause uh, uh, us to be promoted, you see. And that's what happened here with Uzziah. And, uh, and, and his, his fame spread far, uh, far abroad, as far as the entrance of Egypt. Now watch this. For he became exceedingly strong. How many of you'd like to be exceedingly strong? Well, that was because he was seeking the Lord. He put the Lord first, you see. And notice here, and in verse 9, it says, And Uzziah built. And then, and then I'll not take the time, but you can read on through the next few verses. Don't do it now, but do it on your own time. And you see all the wonderful accomplishments that, that, that he did and his army had and that God gave him. And, and there were some in, inventions that God gave, gave to him and whatnot. I tell you, you seek the Lord. You never know what kind of an invention God could give you to be a blessing to mankind and cause you to prosper and be a further blessing, you see. But, but it all happened because he sought the Lord. He put God first. And he sought the Lord. And you can read on, on down through there. And, and, and let's pick up here in, in the middle of verse 15. In the middle of verse 15. So his fame spread far and wide. See, God's promoting him. Why? Because he's seeking the Lord. And, and, and his fame spread far and wide for he was marvelously helped. How many of you like to be marvelously helped? I mean, I mean, God helped him. God marvelously helped him. You know, you know, uh, the wor words in the Bible mean something, don't they? And they're not just there to take up space, are they? So, so when, when, when the Bible says helped him, that's a good deal to be helped. But how many of you'd like to not only be helped by God, but marvelously helped? Amen. Marvelously, marvelously, marvelously. And God helped him marvelously. His fame spread far and wide for he was marvelously helped. And oh, I wish I could stop the message right here. I wish I could, I wish I could, I wish I could, I wish I could. Stop it right here. But we have to get the rest of the story. He was marvelously helped. And you ought to underline this, highlight it, bold it, do whatever you have to do. He was marvelously helped until he became strong. Until he became strong. We have to watch it when God blesses us and makes us strong. I mean, that's when you really have to watch it. When God blesses you and makes you strong. When God blesses you and makes you strong. He was marvelously helped until he became strong. Verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction 
Now, uh, I want to just hold your place in 2 Chronicles 26, but I want you to go to Deuteronomy 8, verse 11. And just want to read a few scriptures here. And God warned his people ahead of time long before this ever happened. Uzziah should have known this. The kings were supposed to keep the, 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 the word of the Lord close by and read it regularly. We've seen that earlier in an earlier lesson. But look at Deuteronomy 8 verse 11. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full... And have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up. And you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirst and thirst, a thirsty land where there was no water. Who brought water for you out of the flinty rock. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know. That he might humble you, that he might test you to do good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might, the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. See, God's warning him not to do that. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyed before you. So shall so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. We've got to watch our hearts, don't we? And we got to really watch it when God makes us strong and lifts us up that we don't become prideful and haughty and forget him. And that's what happened with Uzziah. Now, he started out at 16 years old. And when this happens, when his heart starts to begin lifted up from my calculations, he is in his late 60s at this time. Now, what's another lesson that has been consistent all throughout this? A lesson that's been consistent all throughout this series is as these kings, a lot of them, as they got older, their hearts began to turn from the Lord. So we need to be watchful of ourselves, of our hearts as we get older in chronological age, that we do not allow our hearts to become hardened and calloused. There's something about living in this world that can harden a person. There's something about dealing with people, people that are unfaithful and untrue and people that you help and you go out of your way and you bend over backwards to help them. And then and then when they get the first chance, they stick you in the back. You need to realize the world's full of those kind of people. And those kind of people can really harden, heart, start your heart to become hardened. And then it can it can affect you and it can cause you to distance yourself from the Lord. But we've got to watch our hearts. We've got to keep our hearts soft and pliable. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. Absolutely. And we've seen it again and again with these kings as they got up in years. You saw it with Solomon and others. As they got up in years that their hearts were turned from the Lord. And uh, that's what happened here with Uzziah. When he became strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Pride entered in. And notice this. For he transgressed against the Lord his God... Now watch this, great lesson coming here. He transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now you might read that, you might think, well, so what? I, this is a big deal, big problem right here. 2 Chronicles 26, 16. For he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. See, he was the king. But he wanted to be the priest. This is something we all have to watch about ourselves. Why is it that we always want to be something that we're not? Amen. I think it's just something that, 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 that comes along with the fallen human nature. 
And as Christians, I know we're born again. We're, 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 we're recreated in the likeness and image of the Lord Jesus Christ when we get saved. But we still have this flesh to deal with. And this flesh always seemingly wants to be something that we're not. And I think it'd be pretty neat to be the king. But I tell you what, here you got a king and he wants to be what? The priest. And I'll guarantee it to you just about as much as I can guarantee it. If he'd have been the priest, guess what? He'd have wanted to be the king. And I've watched this. I've dealt with it in my own life and I, I, my own self. You've probably dealt with it in your, with your, your life. And you've probably seen other people I know in pastoring. I've watched it over the years, you know, where I'll see somebody that God is, has, has gifted and anointed to do a certain thing. But they don't want to do that. They want to do this other thing, you know. And, and, and I've watched it. I've watched it where God has, has, has anointed somebody to be an assistant pastor. And they're the, just the most wonderful assistant pastor that there ever is and ever could be. But they want to be the pastor. I've watched it where uh, 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 you'll have youth pastors just, the most, just anointed to, to deal with young people. But they're not, they're, they're not. we got to get content with being, we need to be content with who we're not. Amen. If you're taking notes, you ought to write that down. We need to be content with who we're not. Amen. And I've seen uh, uh, people anointed to be youth pastors, teenage, teenagers, deal with the teenagers. And, and they're just so anointed and God's gifted them. And, and, but they don't want to do that. They want to be the pastor. I've watched pastors. I've seen this pastors anointed to, to shepherd the flock of Almighty God, and, but they don't want to be pastor. They want to be a prophet. And it destroys their churches because they're not a prophet, but they try to be. And then I've seen I've seen I've seen prophets really, you know, they they want to be the pastor. And uh, I'm thinking of of uh, uh, William Branham from all. Those years ago, days of yesteryear, he was anointed. He was a prophet of God and he was anointed to preach, not teach. But he wanted to teach. And Gordon Lindsay and others came to him and warned him. But he wouldn't listen. And long story short, he got off. He was a prophet. I'm talking William Branham. He was a for real prophet, New Testament prophet. And he was, he was a preacher. He wasn't a teacher. He was a preacher. Have you ever seen anybody on television, they teach and they're just the most, just anointing on them, but they try to preach and it's, it's, it's just like, it's, have you ever seen that? Or you see some, some, some people on television, they can preach. I mean, they can preach, 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 but they start, start trying to teach. And it, we need to find out who we are and, 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 and be who we are and be content with who we're not. But William Branham, it, he, he was a prophet and a, and a preacher, but he wanted to teach and it cost him his life. He died young. We need to be watchful. And so Uzziah, see, he was a king, but he wanted to be the priest. He wanted to be something that he was not. We must be content with who we're not. You know, God has set each member in the body of Christ as it has pleased him. So whatever he has, God has set you in the body of Christ to be, be the best that you can be. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think of Korah in the Old Testament with Moses, you know, and, and, and he was upset, you know, because he essentially wanted to take over Moses' position. Remember Korah? And, and, and you really get into studying it. Korah was doing something that, that only him and his people could do. And they were anointed to do it. And, 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 and Moses, essentially, if I remember the story right, just said, go ahead and do, try to do what we're doing here. Try to do what I'm doing. And Korah couldn't do it. He wasn't anointed to do it. But, you know, you really study into that. Moses wasn't anointed to do what Korah was doing. And if Moses would have, Moses would have tried to do what Korah was doing, he would have had a mess. See, see, see Moses needed Korah. Korah needed Moses. But, but Korah wasn't happy with that. And uh, he tried to take over for Moses and whatnot, you know. And, uh, and, and it cost him his life, didn't it? The, the ground opened up, swallowed him up. Is that right? Him and his family and the whole, everybody that was with him. Is that right? So we must learn a lesson here. Let's be content with who, who we are and content with who we're not. Amen. You understand that? You don't want to step out of your calling. You don't want to get outside of that. And that's what happened here with uh, Uzziah. And notice here, verse 17. So now he goes in, Uzziah goes in to the temple of the Lord 
to burn incense on the altar of incense, and he shouldn't have been in there. That was for the priest. He was the king. So Azira, this verse 17, Azira, the priest went in after him, and with him were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men, and they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, it's not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense, get out of the sanctuary, for you have tra you've trespassed, you shall not have honor from the Lord God. Now, you see, think about this right here. Isn't God good? Yes. Isn't God wonderful? God sent these priests to Uzziah to correct him, to get him back on track. Right. Now, now, you ought to highlight that. You ought to underline that. You ought to bold that. You know, you, you ought to get some spray paint and spray paint it. I mean, these are good things. And what have we seen again and again with these kings? God is good. And when they get off track, God sends a prophet. He sends a priest. He sends ministers. He sends people across these kings' path to get them back on track, you see. Thank God for that. And they came and they withstood King Uzziah. And verse 19 is one of the, I mean, again, get to spray paint out. I mean, you need a lot of spray paint in this message, I tell you. Get to spray paint out, get the highlighters out. You got to put this next one in, in blue and red and, and pink and yellow and orange and all, all the colors of the rainbow. Uh, yeah. Now notice, with Uzziah, he got off where he was supposed to be. He was a king. He wanted to be a priest. He's got the, the priest coming to correct him. Now, what do you think he should have done? He should have, he should have humbly repented. Is that right? Yes, Is that correct? Yes. But notice here, notice right here, verse 19, highlight this. Then Uzziah became furious. He got mad. He got angry. He became furious. King James said he became wroth, angry. I tell you what, I have seen so many people over the years, and I've said this again and again, but it bears repetition. When, when God corrects them through a minister of the gospel, instead of re humbly repenting, I'm talking about just a minister standing up here in a pulpit preaching, minding his own business, just preaching, and, and, and he steps on somebody's toes, doesn't even know he steps on their toes, just up here preaching, and they'll get mad as a wet hornet at him. And Uzziah became furious. We shouldn't get furious when God corrects us. We ought to get down on our knees and thank him, you see. But he was furious. And he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priest, I tell you what, that's a bad place to be, angry with the priest, angry with the pastor, angry with the minister. It's a bad place to be. And while he was angry with the priest, while he was angry with the priest, let me ask you on social media today, are you angry with your pastor? Are you angry with something that he said? Are you angry? I tell you what, if what he told you is in line with the word of God, don't be angry with him. Get down on your knees and thank God that God loves you enough to correct you through him, you see. We shouldn't despise the chastening of the Lord. The Bible says, despise not the chastening of the Lord nor faint when you're rebuked by him. See, it means he loves you. He's trying to get you back on track. That's what God was trying to do with Uzziah. But while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord behind, but beside the incense altar. If you're taking notes, you ought to write this down. There is leprosy outside your call. You get outside of what God wants you to do and you start, you, I tell you what, there's leprosy waiting for you out there. There's bad things waiting for you out there. Don't get outside of what God's called you to do. Find out what he's called you to do and just stay right in line with that. Stay right in line with that. Stay right in line with that. I tell you what, I admire ministers. I'll see them. There's some, there's some ministers in the land. They find out exactly what God's called them to do and they stay right in line with it. I said they stay right in line with it. A one that blesses my socks off, just blesses me is Joyce Meyer. Have you ever heard of her? I think most people have. And she, she, she knows what God's called her to do. And she, I've watched her for years. And she stays right inside of what God's called her to do. And God has blessed her marvelously and has used her to reach two, over two-thirds of, uh, of, the, uh, of the world with the gospel. Isn't that wonderful? Because she stays right inside of what God's called her to do. I tell you what, we need, to, we need to learn a lesson from that and stay right inside what God's called us to do because that's where the blessing is. But you get outside of that, there's leprosy waiting for you, you see. And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead 
before the priests in the house of the Lord beside the incense altar. And then verse 20, Isaiah, the chief priest and all the priests looked at him and there in his forehead he was leprous. So they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, he also hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him. The Lord judged him. The Lord struck him. The I said the Lord struck him. Now, was that the perfect will of God? No. Did God want to do that? No. Did God try to warn him? Yes. Did God warn him? Yes. This was Uzziah's doing, but God had to do it and he struck him. He judged him. There's judgment outside of our calling. The judgment of the Lord. Verse 21, King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. Now this is significant here because it says he was a leper until the day of his death. It appears to me that he never repented. Because when, when we, we've seen it, when kings repent, the Bible tells us. When people repent in the Bible, almost without exception, we're told. He was angry. You know, some people, I mean, he was wrong. He was angry. And, and, and he, he said he was a leper. The Bible said he was a leper until the day of his death. You know, there's some people who would rather die than admit they was wrong. I've met a lot of them. I said, I've met a lot of them. I, when I was younger, I was that way, but I've learned. God's worked on me. I, I've learned. My heart's mellowed out, and I, I've missed it a lot. I, I'll admit, if I'm wrong, I, I've missed it. But I've met a lot of people. They'd rather die than admit they was wrong. Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house because he was a leper. He was cut off from the house of the Lord. He couldn't go around people, you see. They had to isolate him. I, I, I can't prove this, but I'm, I'm as sure as I can be. If he'd have repented, God would have restored him. Let's be quick to repent. What do you say? Let's be quick to forgive, quick to repent. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house judging the people of the land. So we'll talk about him next week. He took over for Uzziah while Uzziah was in quarantine. Sad, isn't it? What happened to Uzziah? Started out so well and ended so miserably. But notice something else as we close. Look at verse 23. So Uzziah rested with his fathers. And they buried him. That means he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial, which belongs to the kings. Now let me teach you a lesson about people. For they said he is a leper. And Jotham, his son, reigned in his place. Learn a lesson here about people. They said he is a leper. As time came and went, as time came and went, all the good, wonderful things that Uzziah did, all the tearing down of those walls that he did, all the building of the things that he built, all the seeking of the Lord that he did, all the wonderful, 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 mighty, wonderful things he did under the hand of God, nobody remembered it. All they remembered is he's a leper. That's no different than people are today. You can do 10,000 wonderful things, but do one negative thing. And that's what people are going to remember. And that's what they'll say about you. So we don't care what people say or what people think. All we care about is what God says and what he thinks. Can you say amen? amen. They said he is a leper. They said he is a leper. You can minister 27 years under the power of the Holy Ghost and help multitudes of people and see multitudes of people heal. And then God puts a transition into your ministry and you have to move off one thing and you sell your church and you move off to something else and they'll say, he failed. I don't think 27 years starting a church from scratch. Supposed to pay it off in 20 years. It was paid off in seven. Helping multitudes of missionaries. Giving out thousands and tens of thousands of dollars to missions. Helping orphans. Helping the poor. Seeing multitudes of people healed by the power of God. Of cancer and everything else you can imagine. 27 years starting from scratch in a school with nothing and doing all that. 
and then God transitions you to something else, but yet when you, ha you, know, you sell your church, people say, he failed. And to people that say that, I say, Because most of those people that say that have never built a chicken coop for the Lord. Right. Now, I don't put on the people, I put on the comment. Because we love people and we want them to repent. Yes. But I can see how this right here, God making a transition in our ministry, yeah, he failed. No, didn't fail. I don't think what I just rattled off there is failing. So we don't care what people say. Amen. We follow the Holy Ghost. Yes. But I, am feeling, I feel impressed here as I close. And much we learn much today. We learn much today. But do you see this again how as they got older, their heart was turned away from the Lord? Do you see that? We need to watch that, don't we? I said, we need to watch that. We need to watch that. And for some reason or another, I don't, I, 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 I don't know, but I, I'm supposed to give the Ecostella Tama Robankante. This is for somebody, I think on social media. Bend Rohodama Ikeleste, Kaiz Sama, Lodongo Gose, Rehese Bangata, Tolodo, Inkelena Igamoro, O Sama. Rantigile ego rohoma galada, sorodomoro, karanane, bosta, rahais, kandaskatete deste. There are those who hold on to me, saith the Spirit of the Lord, and hold on to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with one hand, and hold on to the world with the other. And so down the road you've come all these years holding on to the name of Jesus with one hand and the world with the other. And all the time, my spirit has dealt with your heart. And you've had that, 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 that conviction in your heart that you need to turn loose of the world and come on over and walk with me totally and completely, says the Spirit of the Lord. And in your thoughts, you've said, well, I'll have time to repent. 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 I'm going to continue on holding on to the world and down the road somewhere I'll repent. Right before I die, I'll repent and get right with God. But this is what the Spirit of God says. You know not what day or what hour your soul will be required of you. And the night will come and it will come upon you quickly. And you'll not be able to work and you'll not have time to repent as you've thought. So hear what it is the Spirit of God saying to you. And take this opportunity and work while it's day and work while the time is at hand. And repent now. Repent now, say the Spirit of the Lord, and turn loose of the world. And come on over. And walk with me. And you'll have joy unspeakable like you've not known. And it'll be full of glory. And you'll say, oh, I should have done this years ago. Because you know that while you've had a hold of the world, you've had that heaviness upon you. So turn it loose and walk with me. But do it now and do it quickly. For you know not what day or hour your soul will be required of you. For there is a dangerous place to die, says the Spirit of the Lord. My, my, my. My, my, my. My, my, my. And, and, and the person may not even be watching right now. They may, they may pick this up in a few days or a few weeks. You know, you gotta go out on social media. Sometimes people don't pick it up for days or weeks. They might not even get it till it goes on our sermon player, you know. Or it goes on YouTube. That needed to be said to somebody. There's several people that need, need to be said to. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a holiness in here today. There's a power of the Spirit in here today. Now, Holy Ghost is here every time we come. But sometimes he turns up, he jacks up that anointing a little bit. Did you see it was on me stronger when we started? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God.
Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Keep the United States of America in your prayers. Particularly as we move into the fall of this year. Keep the United States in your prayers. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. If you're out there on social media, just raise your hands to the Lord in the sanctuary here. Just raise your hands to the Lord and worship the Lord and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let's bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 If you're out there on social media and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to do that. You really need to do it. You need to repent of your sins. What does it mean to repent? That means to have a change of heart, a change of mind, and turn from the way you were going and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on Him with all of your heart. Call on His name. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the implication there is with a repentant heart. If you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. You'll miss a devil's hell and you'll make a God's holy heaven. And Jesus will make your life worth living in the meantime. Hey, it's been an honor for me to come to you on social media today. Please listen to the words that were shared here today about King Uzziah and the other things that were said. Take it to heart. Heed it. Listen to it. You know, Jesus said that, uh, that when the word goes forth, the devil comes immediately to steal the word. But I tell you what, the devil, if you study it out, the devil cannot steal the word from you if you'll pay attention to it, pay heed to it, and give it first place in your life. It's the people who just hear it and then they, uh, they hear it and then they uh, uh, don't pay any attention to it. Then the devil can steal it. But if you'll pay attention to it and, 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 and study it and uh, hang with it and give it your full attention, then the devil can't steal it. Glory to God. Well, God bless you and we'll see you next time.